on today's episode of Locked on Wild. Turns out Darby was responsible for one more thing as assistant coach with the Minnesota Wilds. Not a surprise. It's an area that was a struggle point the last few years. We'll talk about face-offs on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash on to get started. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we will take a look at face-offs, an area of struggle for the Minnesota Wild over the last several seasons, and ways that the Wilds can potentially improve in that area going forward. We'll also talk about the uh, continued bits of information that are coming out uh, with the Natalie Darwitz ouster from the PWHL. Uh, there's a lot going on. With that, and uh, we'll take a look at how the Florida Panthers were able to grab a 1-0 lead in the Stanley Cup final. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. We're joined, as always, by Alex Micheletti here on uh, our Monday edition of the show. Alex, glad to have you along, as always. We're going to uh, we're going to dive into because it seems like more information comes out on a daily basis behind this. Uh, PWHL situation in which Natalie Darwitz was uh, removed as GM of PWHL Minnesota. But first, I saw an interesting article um, over the weekend from clutchpoints.com. Two moves the Wild must make in the 2024 NHL offseason. And the first was that the Wild must improve in the faceoff circle. And this actually jogged my memory. Because uh, I think it was on Judd's Hockey Show, I heard that uh, not only was Darby Hendrickson responsible for uh, the team defense, he was also responsible for face-offs. And that is an area that the Wild have, they have since 2019-2020, the sixth lowest face-off percentage in the entirety of the NHL. And look, face-offs are not, it, it's not an imperfect or it's not a perfect science. Like you can still win games, obviously, while not being great in the face-off circle. But I found it fascinating that that was another area too that it just seems has consistently not been great. And it seems like in instances where the Wild really, especially against better teams, where they come up short, on the special teams, this is what this is almost exclusively what led to the Dallas Stars being able to just destroy the Wilds in that postseason series. Was it seemed like every time there was a uh, a power play for Dallas, they would win that face off. Every time the Wild were on the kill, couldn't grab a face off, and so it's not really an issue until it's a huge issue. And so that I, I found that interesting, and so obviously an area that the wild need to improve upon. But I wonder how much of just getting a new face to try some different things will help. (laughs) It it can't go, it can't get worse than it was. Right. So uh, I, you know, I'm not going to put it all on Darby too, uh, because look at what he had to deal with too, in the center position, Uh, Lucini, Freddie Goudreau, who did nothing right. This, this past season, uh, at times Ryan Hartman was in there other than Eck, I mean, it was, you know, it's a struggle fest. Marco Rossi, uh, isn't great at, you know, face-offs. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's really tough, but like you said, maybe, <laughs> maybe a fresh, uh, uh, perspective that things could, could help, um, you know, to be determined on that. Um, 
you know, and free agency, it doesn't seem like they're targeting, uh, you know, a low, um, uh, you know, value center. So it seems like they want more wing help. So I don't think much is going to change as far as in the, in the center de department, in, unless a, um, a Marky, Marco Rossi move is made, uh, or, you know, you're going to have to wait until next summer for, uh, you know, center upgrades. So, <laughs> we'll see but you know like you said too puck possession is, is so so key you look yeah. at uh you look at the this florida edmonton series too it's just you know <laughs> showing off um, um clearly so um yeah uh, i don't know how you solve it you know it's been a it's been an issue going back and you know one when, when uh, miko moved on um so um, you know, not, not much, not much has changed, uh, for the, for the wild in, in, in that department, but, uh, yeah, they, they need to do something to at least, you know, get in the mid pack instead of, you know, the, yeah. you know, the bottom half, you know, that's, um, you know, it's the reason why, uh, they haven't, you know, they didn't make the playoffs this year and why they can't get out of the first round too. Collectively as a team, the wild were at 47.3% in the face-off circle. Jewel Erickson Eck took by himself 1,600 face-offs um, for the team. He was at 49.7%, so just under 50. But you look at the guys that it's expected will be kind of the main face-off performers next season. Um, Jewel Erickson Eck, Marco Rossi was at 44.7. He had uh, 700 and... 49 total faceoffs. Um, Freddie Goudreau, probably your fourth line center. We'll see. Um, he was at 49.9%, but he took like 500 and 547 faceoffs. So you see what I'm getting at here is that Jewel Erickson Eck, especially once John Hines took over, Jewel Erickson Eck was basically the only one taking faceoffs. Ryan Hartman was second on the team. And he took 790, 790. And again, Jewel Erickson had 1600 by himself. So um, as far as a specialist goes, as this article suggests, someone like um, Chandler Stevenson or Kevin Stenland, uh, flat out, the Wild don't have room. They don't have room on the roster to be able to bring somebody in. Stevenson is getting, he's one of the top, you know, free agent centers. There's, there's no way he's going to be yeah. cashing in. This is his, his one time to, to cash in. They probably don't even have enough money in Vegas to, to resign him. So that's, that's, uh, that's telling you a whole lot there. And, and Stenland's a, you know, fourth line grinder in, in Florida that getting him here is not going to change much. I, yeah. So just kind of piggybacking off of this article, I just I don't see a way in which the Wild have the roster space to add somebody in because it it just if they're going to if the Wild have to spend, like if they have to go get somebody off of the free agent market, um I would rather it be somebody that's going to make an impact in like the top six. Like if, if I'm, if I'm backed into the corner and told you have to choose the wild, have to spend money on somebody. I want that to be somebody that can step into the top six. Again, my overall want is for one of those prospects. Like if Riley Heights is shows that he's ready I want him to have that spot. But if the Wild have to spend the money, spend it on a top six, not a not a face-off specialist. Just no. whoever they bring in as coach, try some new things, some new drills to try to uh, to get some more consistent results. Because face-offs come down to reaction time. It comes down to what your opponent is trying to do. Your opponent may try to push you out of the way. Um, it comes down to if you jump early and you get pulled off of the face off circle, like there are a lot of different variables that come with winning a face off. And so it's not simply who gets to the puck quickest because 
your opponent may just decide, okay, I'm going to let the guy behind me grab this, and I'm just going to push my face-off opponent straight back. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. And so it has consistently been, you know, the sixth worst since 2019, 2020. That's, that's not a fluke, but there's a lot that goes into it. And um, I think at this point, really the only way that that can improve for the wild is just really making sure that those guys that are taking the face offs are the best equipped to do it. And we, we, we talk about this all the time too. It's going to be a big summer for Patrick uh, Dwyer to, to look at video and, uh, and figure out this penalty kill because mm-hmm. that, you know, that and, and the face offs have been just absolutely destroying the wild. And yeah. so it's, it's, you know, as a young coach, there's going to be a ton of pressure on him. And same thing with King with the, with the power play. Um, now, you know, he had a phenomenal power play in Vancouver. Uh, we'll see if he can get that fully turned around uh, for the wild too, because as we know, special teams, uh, this, this, this game is, is so tight. And so you have to deliver on special teams, and especially with a team with the wild that, you know, lacks, scoring more than more than others in in the division in the central division you look at all the talent um up and down in 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 the in the special teams you know the wild isn't uh when you compare it to the rest of the division it's uh it's a giant gap right now so yeah you uh you can you can take a look at this florida oilers uh series the reason why these two teams are in the stanley cup is their penalty kills and their power plays have been phenomenal. And now the, the, you know, the power plays are getting shut down. Well, and that's because the PKs for, for both teams have been absolutely unbelievable. And you look at the mm-hmm. Oilers, it's an all time power play and, and Florida uh, killed all the, all the um, penalties that they had in, in game one. We'll see if that, you know, continues for game two, but if I'm Dwyer and King, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching, you know, the, the special teams for the series. And uh, as a further extension of kind of this this leadoff topic of faceoffs, part of Lockdown Wild 2.0 is head to the comment section on uh, YouTube to voice your opinions as to how you think the Wilds can improve in the faceoff circle. Uh, we will read a couple of responses to lead off tomorrow's episode. But um, uh, again, head to the comment section. And our pinned comment, what would you do to improve face-offs for the Minnesota Wilds heading into next season? So um, we'll uh, we'll see what we get for responses there from the always elite Lockdown Wild comment section. Now, Alex, we've got um, a much bigger mess on our hands to uh, discuss. PWHL Minnesota, more coming out on a daily basis as to uh, why Natalie Darwitz was shown the door, and so we'll uh, we'll talk about the latest in what uh, is looking like a uh, pretty lengthy power struggle between uh, coach and GM. That's on the way as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Summertime means baseball, the NBA Finals, and more, and you can bet on all of it. On FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. $200. You can bet on everything from the finals MVP to who is going to hit one out of the park. If you want an easy way to cash in on that $5 bet, a can't miss $5 bet, as it were, just pick whoever the Chicago White Sox are playing and bet on them to win outright because. Guess what? Chicago, not great. So if you want the opportunity to throw those bonus bets at the NBA Finals, Stanley Cup Final, or on the rest of the Major League Baseball season, just go with whoever Chicago is playing and uh, and you're set. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back to today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Stay tuned all week long for a full unveil of Lockdown Wild 2.0. 
started with our uh, live show yesterday. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. It was a uh, smashing success. Denny just bringing the heat the uh, the whole time, and it was uh, it was great. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing that, as well as uh, just continuing to uh, kind of keep growing the show here um, throughout the rest of the off season. Alex PWHL Minnesota had nine days to uh, to celebrate the Walter Cup, and uh, then just have been embroiled in controversy ever since. Natalie Darwitz was ousted as a GM of PWHL Minnesota. All the teams owned by the league, by the way, which is why this that's that's why this was a league decision, not a team decision. And in the most recent um, interviews, and I know you uh, you had one um, from the Rink Live that you uh, tuned into that uh, that had some more interesting stuff in it as well. Michael Russo on Sunday with Dan Barrero. Uh, it, it sounds like this was a uh, a pretty substantial power struggle between Darwitz and Ken Klee, and. This wasn't something that like just came up out of nowhere. This has been going on for most of the season. And it came to drawing lines in the sands. And the loudest voices in support of Ken Klee were uh, some of the veteran players uh, that basically had the most the most sway and the most influence, which is why it ended up being Klee that, uh, that won out as opposed to Darwitz. Yeah, the crazy thing too that we just you know found out too more recently, he interviewed for the GM job too before Darwitz got it. So there's clearly a push, you know, from from that side of things that he wants total power, which it, it's it's frustrating. You know, I've been really upfront about this. Uh, you know, I've talked a lot about it on Twitter. It's where's the transparency from the league? Yeah. And now, uh, you know, there could be. Uh, NDA is involved now too, but uh, you know, it was one year contracts too for everybody in this league too, which is makes no sense. Uh, that, that, you know, that that's going to be frustrating to, to go just year by year um, yeah. for a league that's brand new. You, you would think you, they could try to get some security for these, uh, you know, people that are in the league, uh, but it's just really too bad because, you know, this this team won a championship and it's you know this state has been asking for you know one of their sports teams to to have a championship and have ongoing success and to to have this turmoil happen days after you know they won a title it's uh yeah like i said it's it's really frustrating and um you know natalie advocated for this team so much more than than a lot of the teams i mean they were the only team in the league to play in an NHL facility and, you know, have all, you know, all those amenities. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, yeah, it's like, you know, could you imagine the yeah, other could be playing somewhere else? They could be playing in a high school rank or, you know, you know, somewhere not, you know, nowhere near what uh, the X brings. And so it was, you know, really cool that they got to experience that and continue to do that because of Natalie. And she yeah. built this team from scratch. Could you imagine doing that? That, that is not easy, um, and you have to draft right, and that's that's all on on Natalie Darwitz, and she's been a winner wherever she's been, you know. And so, you know, I, I feel really bad. I hope, uh, you know, hope she can land on her feet somewhere again soon. Um, you know, she's a legend. I'm from Egan, where she grew up, and she was a legend you know, watching growing up, and cool to represent uh, Egan, Minnesota, you know, wherever she's gone. So. You know, I, I hope uh, I, I you know wish her the best um, as well. And you know, this is going to be interesting, you know, going forward here too. Because if they don't win the Walter Cup this season, you know, this this is on this is on the group that pushed her out. You know, yeah. this is what you wanted. Now, will you have the same success? Time will tell. Well, and it's it's interesting too because it almost like it feels like the PWHL just kind of wanted to see how things went in year one before they committed to anything yeah. long term. Well, like, and the weird thing too, so this is the only market that had had issues. Like what? You know, they, yeah. they did reviews of every of every team, and the team that won it had had the issues. That 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 doesn't seem right. And the fact that they had to hire a consulting firm, which I'm sure 
cost hundreds of thousands. And yeah, even it's not then, cheap. Yeah, not cheap. And even they, even they told the league, which I thought would be the opposite, but they told the league, hey, mediate this, you know, but uh, the league went against what the, what the consulting firm told them, which, which is really bizarre. It's like, why did you even hire this consulting firm then? You know, it just, it's, it's the lack of information, uh, you know, them taking forever to, to, to make a statement, uh, this, you know, dropping at, you know, almost midnight on Thursday night was yeah. bizarre too. They just are not handling it very well. And which is, you know, kind of surprising because the guy that, um, you know, owns this league is the, is the Dodgers owner. Um, so, and then he owns the Chelsea football club too. And in, in, in England and, you know, just like how are, you know, how is this, how is this happening for, for a guy that you know, owns multiple, you know, teams in, in a league? It just, it, it makes, it makes the leadership look, look really, really bad for sure. Yeah. It's uh, it's not, it's not the type of traction you want from a PR standpoint. No after your first season was pretty widely viewed as a success. The attendance everywhere was, you know, they smashed records and yeah, yeah like you said, they are going to have to climb their way out of this one. And the awkward thing is the draft is, <laughs> is today and in St. Paul and, you know, Klee is going to be acting, you know, GM and help the rest of the coaching staff is, is going to help, uh, you know, with, with picking names, but that that's awkward. You know, now they have to, you know, figure out what they're going to do as a GM. You know, they, if they make him the GM, people are going to be outraged. Um, so they, yeah, they better look outside and, 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 and look outside the organization for, for the GM spot. Well, and from what I was reading too, it sounds as though they're going to be picking somebody to uh, to handle that role, and so this kind of leads me back to two because remember the uh, the original head coach of PWHL Minnesota resigned like ten days before the season started. So connect the dots. This to me feels like a situation where a coach was put in for this team that Darwitz was not a you know they just did not. They just did not get along and it just built up throughout the season. And it, uh, it led to a point where there just was an impasse that couldn't be, um, couldn't be broached. Yeah. It's, it's super awkward that, you know, resolved. with this, with this league where the, where the owner of the league, you know, the league own is, is the one making decisions. Uh, I, I don't know how, I mean, that, that, that seems like it would have to be very difficult for, for Natalie and, you know, I'm, I've been seeing a lot on online too that you know people said that you know she rubs people the wrong way. She wins. She does whatever it takes yeah. to win. You know that. I mean, isn't that the point of of being in professional sports too? Is is to win. Um, and I I take I take her any day of the week on on uh, on a team to to run it. Um, so yeah, that that that's frustrating just because of everything everything she did to, you know, to, to, you know, help this team grow and, and win and making in season trades and, and signings too. And, uh, yeah, that, that's all on Natalie, you know, I mean, yeah. sure. The coach did a lot too, but Natalie was the one that picked the team <laughs> from, put it from, together. from, from scratch. Um, so she deserved a, a whole lot better. And this, the more and more that comes out from the league, it just, it, they, they're creating more, issues than you know than solving the the problem and to kind of wrap this full circle yep. it's far from over like no, no this is this is going to continue we we know the the writers in this town they they don't give up you know they they might be stopped in in the short term but they'll they'll get to the bottom of it no yeah. no, no doubt about it uh, the athletic as we know joe and and mike are you know, the best of the best. Uh, we're very fortunate to, to have them. And you know, I know the rink live will, will stick on us with Jess Myers and, and Rachel uh, with uh, the star tribune. I mean, these are uh, phenomenal uh, uh, reporters. So <laughs> they, they will eventually get, get to the bottom of it. Uh, They'll get sure. what they need. And, you know, it's just, it's so unfortunate too, after all the drama that we've had with the wild uh, to have it, 
deal on the women's side too. It's like, what is going on in this, yeah. in this town with, uh, with leadership and, and leagues. It's, uh, it's crazy. Just a shame, yeah. but uh, we'll keep an eye on it as things unfold. And another part of lockdown wild 2.0, we will have consistent uh, PWHL coverage for you um, throughout the season. We got Alexis locked in for that, so uh, really excited to uh, to have her on regularly to talk PWHL Minnesota um, next season and beyond. And to recap the draft, we'll have her back on um, once once the dust has all settled there too. So good luck to the draft picks. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's got to be awkward coming. Best in. of luck. Yes, best of luck. Um, we'll finish by talking a little bit about the Stanley Cup Final. Uh, something that up until this point we really haven't dove into at all, and so. We'll uh, take a look at how the Panthers grabbed game one, despite a pretty solid game from the Edmonton Oilers. That's on the way as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wilds your first listen each and every day. Uh, again, reminder to check out our pinned comment on today's episode asking what you would do to improve in the uh, face-off circle. Um, just uh, just respond with your comments, and uh, we will uh, read off the best ones on tomorrow's episode. Alex, let's talk about uh, Stanley Cup Final Game 1, the Panthers' win, despite a game in which the Oilers thoroughly outshot them peppered Sergei Bobrovsky all game long, but uh, it's the Panthers that withstand and outlast. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because with the exception of the goals that Stuart Skinner gave up and not being able to capitalize on the power play, hard to, hard to feel bad about what the Oilers put together. It's just, they, they just were on the wrong end of one of those goalie games. And Bobrovsky just absolutely stood tall and he just, uh, was was not to be outdone yeah um, you know zach hyman you know after the game had a good comment uh you know if we play like that you know the rest of the series you know we'll be fine you know they you know, of course they got to finish but uh you know they, at at times of, the, of that game they were tilting the ice uh, uh connor mcdavid had a funny comment too he said uh you know the hockey gods were <laughs> maybe getting back at us uh um, you know, after the way they uh, finished up the Dallas series where they what had like you know, 11 or 12 shots on goal and they and they won that. Uh, but uh, yeah, they uh, at, at times, like like I mentioned, uh, they looked like they were out playing Florida. You know, the deep pairing of, of Cody CC and Darnell Nurse, I said on Twitter that it was a, a horror film. Uh, yeah, just uh, they were both, you know, minus two and, uh, you know, then the empty netter, but uh, didn't really affect. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they just did not play well. And Cody, Cody CeCe's a healthy scratch tonight. Uh, so yeah. um, we'll see if that that helps the, the, the Oilers at all. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they kept I don't know if this was in the scouting report or I don't know if you noticed it a lot, too, uh, but they kept firing low on Bob yeah. and it was not working. <laughs> yeah. They, I don't know what, what they were thinking. He is elite down low. Um, and they didn't even try to get it up high. Uh, so uh, a lot on a couple of those breakaways, it was low right on his pad. Uh, so I, I don't know what the deal was there. We'll see if that, that changes, uh, tonight. Um, but, uh, yeah, Bob was absolutely incredible. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, I'm sure you noticed this, but Hyman missed an empty net. Um, and, you know, they just had a couple, you know, the puck bounces did not go their way. Uh, you know, um, Cody CC had a point from the shot or a shot from the point that uh, hit uh, Corey Perry in the crease. So they, uh, McDavid had a, re a really good chance too, but um, yeah, we'll see if that, that, uh, that changes uh, tonight. But uh, what more can you say about Alexander Barkov too? He yeah. Was, an absolute beast offensively and defensively. He was blocking shots. Uh, he, had a, he had a couple of assists. Uh, he was just all, all over the ice. Uh, uh, it's, you know, he's, uh, he's like uh, uh, Eric's neck on steroids. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing what, what he does uh, on the ice out there. And a guy that um, what always seems to be, what would be a great wild fit, uh, but you know, they could never make it work. I'm sure. Bill Guerin 
you know, has always tried to tr get him on this team is Evan Rodriguez. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He scored a great goal. Um, you know, he, he's, <laughs> I I've looked back at his career on the lines that he's played on and I've seen it on social media too, but just look at, look at the teams that he's been on, um, going all the way back in college. He played with Jack Eichel. Um, uh, he played with Nathan McKinnon. Uh, you know, it just, you know, it's just amazing. You know, now he's with uh, Kachuk, uh, but uh, yeah, it's just amazing. Some of, the, and he played with Sidney Crosby too. Uh, can't can't forget Sid, but he's uh, uh, he's found his way onto some really successful lines, and he's uh, you know super un underrated guy. Doesn't cost a lot, um, and so he himself has said, you know, I've never been the star player on the team, but you know, I you know I, I do my role, you know, and uh, you know he's clearly uh, he thriving in the in the playoffs and you know, you got a guy like Carter Vahegi too. It's, it's amazing. Remember he was with Tampa Bay and he was in another lineup playing fourth line. He gets to Florida and he's just, he's taken off. It's kind of like uh, uh, Jonathan March so too. Uh, he, uh, um, you know, found his way uh, in his career uh, at the beginning with, with Florida and for whatever reason, <laughs> Florida didn't uh, keep Mar March so and they let him be exposed in the, uh, you know, in the expansion draft and the rest is history there. But, uh, you know, they've Florida's found their way back into the Stanley Cup. So good on them. Also helps to have a table setter like Sam Bennett to 11 hits. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's crazy. People forget that he was a fourth overall pick in, in his draft, too, which is, you know, you think of him as like more of a grinder, but he was, uh, you know, highly thought of. Uh, and it's amazing in that, you know, from that draft class, they have the top four in this series, you know, which is, isn't that crazy to think, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. And, and Florida has three of them, you know, Eckblad and, and Reinhardt too, and then dry Um, so yeah, it's, I, it's amazing that, uh, you know, those, those guys are all, they've made it in the Stanley cup and, you know, Bennett was <laughs> poor Calgary. Uh, I'm sure they just, <laughs> they're like, Oh my goodness. They look at all their, all their players, you know, that have made their, made the way to Florida on that, that trade, the, you know, Kachuk Kubadro trade, it's, it'll go down as one of the worst of, well, I mean, great for Florida, but Calgary, it's yeah. like, oh man. Calgary that you couldn't fit the L you couldn't fit the L for that trade in Canada. Like it's, it's too big. And in the, the funny thing too, is Brad tree living. Now he's in Toronto, the, you know, and you know, the GM at the time when he was in Calgary and he goes to Toronto and uh, a team that can't get out of the first round. And yeah, it's like, Hmm, yeah, we want him running our organization. And it's probably going to have to do Calgary. something similar. Toronto is going to likely yeah. be parting ways with one of the big four. Oh yeah. And if it's and Mitch so, Marner, you know, he's, you know, he gets a lot of flack for not showing up in the postseason. but what if they trade him and he, you know, he goes to a Nashville and Nashville ends up in the, oh, in God, the Stanley Cup. To... That would be, well, of course we don't want to see that in the central division, but uh, you know, it seems like Nashville's trying to do something, you know, Barry Trotz is, yeah. is up to something by moving McDonough, you know, so we'll, we'll see. A GM that is actively trying to improve his team. Oh, well, <laughs> wouldn't that, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. Yes. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Edmonton responds. I, and you know, with the exception of CC out of the lineup, you, you just, you just have to capitalize on those opportunities. They yeah. certainly had a ton. And so yeah. it's an interesting situation being down one Oh, but feeling like if you just kind of, do what you did again, that it's going to lead to better results the next time. Well, I, yeah, we don't, I don't, I don't expect Bob to have four shutouts, you know, no. I, this, this Edmonton offense is, is too good for that to happen. And, uh, you know, I think Zach Hyman, you know, he'll, <laughs> you know, he'll definitely bury if he gets that, that chance again, out, out front, um, you know, they are way, way, way too talented. And, um, the Oilers have responded to adversity. <laughs> I mean, they've, to beat Dallas in Ottinger, um, that, that, that tells you a lot. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, they just need Stuart Skinner to be <laughs> just average, you know, at least better mm -hmm. than, you know, it's, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the goals on him, you know, just because, you know, it was CC and nurse that just, just had 
just awful games. No and resistance. It's it's amazing that you know the Oilers are in the Stanley Cup. You know, with the way those those two have been playing defense, uh, you know, it goes to show you just how amazing, um, you know, Drysaitel and McDavid are. Hyman uh, and a guy that doesn't get enough credit is Nugent Hopkins. That guy, yes. it's unbelievable. He's he's playing power plays, playing penalty kill. It's just it's really cool to see where he's where he's at in his career, and he's he's comfortable, uh, you know, not being the top dog, but he's contributing like. You know, like, you know, like he is, um, and yeah, just, just fun to, you know, to, to watch him play. Same thing with Zach Hyman. He, he was a Florida Panthers draft pick. So it's just, it's just funny how, um, you know, careers can, can go and where, where, where it leads to. So yeah, I'm hoping, hoping this is a long series. Uh, you know, it, it was a really entertaining first game. So hopefully that, yeah. that continues. It was a good start for yeah. sure. Um, that's all we got for you for, today we'll see how the oilers respond uh but do just want to uh pour one out for cap friendly which will be shuttering as of july because the washington capitals bought it um and are shuttering it so that uh, other teams quote (laughs) cannot utilize its vast database and it's uh, aren't they in? Uh, I saw in there too. They're like, we'll wait until after uh, the draft and, and at least the start of free agency. I was like, of of course. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully, you know, sites like Puckpedia can can take over. And I'm sure, you know, it's funny that they did this because you you know there's a lot of smart people out there and they'll just make another yeah uh, you know site and like i said puckpedia is there but i'm sure there'll be other rivals out there and you know it wasn't before cap friendly there was something called cap geek so you know i'm sure there's you know there's analytic people out there that will uh um you know try to you know do what uh, cap friendly was similar on you know and in graphics track. and that's that sort of thing but yeah what a what a move by, by the capitals um i i saw someone had a hilarious tweet that um you know next year's top line for <laughs> for the capitals is <laughs> is ovechkin strom and cap friendly on the on the oh wing uh, that was that was um, funny I'm looking at spot track right now. That's a big one that is used for like NFL yeah. um, for salary cap and such. And it looks similar. So I will yeah. probably, uh, I'll probably throw my weight towards spot track, but if there are any others yeah, that sure. anybody um, uses regularly, please drop them in the comments because um, cap friendly is a valuable asset that is now just going to be disappearing, which oh, I man. Just especially for it. free agency. It's, and it's one of Seth and I's favorite uh, things to, to follow. And uh, we can't, can't wait for the draft and, and that, to, you know, it's, it's crazy. Free agency is literally like, I think the next day or two after the, the draft. So it's um, fast. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, we'll see, you know, you know, if, if Gustafson does get moved, that that changes everything for free mm-hmm. agency. So I I think if he isn't traded at the draft, then they're just going to run it back. So we'll yeah. see. We will see what happens. But uh, appreciate everybody tuning in, and um, we will continue to keep you updated on all of this and more. Again, don't forget to uh, answer today's question of the day: What would you do to improve? the uh, face-off production for the Minnesota Wild next season and beyond. We'll uh, we'll take a look at the responses and we'll uh, reassess on tomorrow's episode. Make sure to hit the like button on today's video or follow on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Lockdown Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday, plus live shows and short-form content on social media as well. Stay tuned for that. We got a lot coming for you. Throughout the rest of the offseason, all parts of the Locked On Podcast Network.